Here we're going to look at the student's t distribution, a distribution that's closely related to the standard normal distribution, and one that is used in a variety of different statistical inference procedures. So we're going to have our common situation here. We're about to draw a random sample of n observations from a normally distributed population, and we're going to have this statistic x bar minus mu over sigma over the root of n. We're going to call that a z, and that thing has a standard normal distribution. So we've looked at this previously, but one of the ideas here is that this sigma, this population standard deviation, is usually an unknown quantity. So we estimate it with s, our sample standard deviation. So we've got a new statistic here that's going to look something like this, x bar minus mu over s over the square root of n. But something fundamental has changed here. We've replaced a known constant with a statistic, a statistic that has a sampling distribution. And so this statistic here is going to be related to the standard normal distribution, but it has extra variability here. And we call this a t. And we call it a t because that statistic has a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So the t distribution depends on these degrees of freedom, more on that in a bit, but our standard normal distribution looks something like this, centered at zero, if you recall. Our t distribution is going to look a lot like that, except we're going to have greater area in the tails because of this extra variability and a lower peak. So if that's our standard normal distribution, then a t distribution looks something like that, with more area in the tails and a, sure, and a lower peak. Still centered about zero, still symmetric about zero. Well, let's look at that in a bit more detail. Here we have a t distribution with one degree of freedom and a standard normal distribution. Now, you'll note the extra variability in the t distribution, the extra area in the tails and the shorter peak. But as we let those degrees of freedom increase, as those degrees of freedom increase, that t distribution is tending towards our standard normal distribution. It's getting closer and closer. There's still greater area in the tails. There's still a shorter peak. But the, as the degrees of freedom, cre freedom increase, it's getting closer and closer to the standard normal distribution. Now let's speed this up a little bit here. And as we can see, as our degrees of freedom start to approach 30 here, that our t distribution is getting very close to the standard normal distribution. But there's still a little bit of extra area in the tails, and there's still a little bit of a lower peak there. Now let's see how that affects things when we use our statistical inference procedures. If you recall, when we were doing confidence intervals for mu when sigma was known, let's say I wanted a 95% confidence interval, well I drew my picture like this. And I said, I want this middle area here to be 0.95. And I want the combined tail areas to be 0.05, which means that this is 0.025. And this is 0.025. And I called this my z 0.025, the z value such that the area to the right was 0.025. Now this worked out to 1.96 when we did this before. This was 1.96. Now when we do this for the t distribution, it's going to be very, very similar. We still draw a very similar type of picture. We've got 0.95 in the middle. And we're still splitting up that area into those different tails. And we're going to call this t now, t.025. But that t value is not going to be 1.96. It's actually going to be bigger than 1.96. How much bigger than 1.96? Well, that depends on the degrees of freedom. As the degrees of freedom gets big, get big, it's going to get close to that 1.96. Now, we can find that value using a computer or looking it up in a t-table, but let's see a summary here. So here we have a situation where we'll recall that our z.025 is 1.96. And let's compare this t-distribution values. So here, if we have a sample size of 6, then we have 6 minus 1, or 5 degrees of freedom, and the t.025 value is actually quite a bit bigger than that 1.96. But as our sample size increases, with the resulting increase in the degrees of freedom, the t distribution is getting closer and closer and closer. So this t.025 is going to get closer and closer to 1.96. And a t with infinite degrees of freedom here is actually the same as the standard normal distribution. So with infinite degrees of freedom, it's 1.96. If you recall, the t was getting closer and closer and closer to the standard normal as the degrees of freedom increase. So in the olden days, we used to say things like, wow, well, if your degrees of freedom are at least 30, we could look that up in a, in a standard normal table and it's close enough. But if you look here, really, this t of 0.025, 
2.042, that's quite a bit different from the 1.96, and we really shouldn't be looking that up in a standard normal table if we should be using a T. So when we are sampling from a normally distributed population, and we're getting our standard deviation based on sample data, and it's not a known value for your entire population, we really should be looking things up with our T distribution.